Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back. And I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. Today I'm gonna to show you all how to make chicken and dumplings. Chicken and dumplings is on the menu at the Young's house and I'm so excited to share with you all how I make my homemade dumplings. I heard you all's request. You all said, Gina baby, you have a video up there for chicken and dumplings, but you don't actually show us how to make the dumplings. You use homemade frozen dumplings. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to make these dumplings homemade from scratch. And listen here, these bad boys are so good. They're so simple to make, do not require a lot of ingredients. And listen here. They're gonna be amazing. Here's what you'll need to make Gina Young style, homemade chicken and dumplings. You all never had my homemade chicken and dumplings, baby. You better make yourself. Okay, everyone, let's start off by showing you what lovely ingredients you're going to need. You will need fresh thyme. I have a bundle of fresh thyme. It's nice and beautiful. You're gonna need fresh parsley, as well as celery. Make sure you wash all of your vegetables off, okay? You're gonna need fresh garlic, and I might use two large cloves. You're gonna need a large onion, as well as better than bouillon, chicken base flavoring. When you purchase this and you open it up, after you open it up and use it, you wanna store this in your refrigerator. This right here is love in a jar. It's amazing flavor. It's gonna give you a beautiful chicken flavor in your broth, okay? You're gonna need red chili pepper flakes. Those of you that are not fan of heat, then you don't have to use it. I just want just a little bit of heat, just enough to tickle the back of the throat. Not enough to burn anybody's socks off. We're just gonna use just a little bit. The spices will be cracked black pepper, garlic powder and onion powder, and salt. And you can see that I have some beautiful chicken here. I have chicken thighs, I have chicken legs, I have chicken breasts and wings that I have washed. And I've washed the chicken with lemon, cold water, and salt, okay? You're gonna need some fresh carrots, okay? These are the kind of carrots that I like to use to have that somewhat of a crinkle look to them. You're gonna need carrots, as well as peas. I highly suggest when you choose your peas, you get fresh peas. Don't get those kind out of the can because they're always soggy and mushy. Now, as far as our homemade dumplings, the ingredients that you will need is two cups of flour, and that's an all-purpose flour that I'm using. You're gonna need one tablespoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of cracked black pepper, and one and one-thirds cup of milk. Now, as far as the milk, you can use any kind of milk that you would like to use. If you wanted to use a buttermilk, by all means, you can. And right here, you can see that I'm going to use my lovely wok that I absolutely love to use. So many of you ask me every day, Gina, where did you get your wok from? My dad purchased um, this wok for me years and years and years ago as a Christmas gift. And it came in a Wolfgang Puck collection of a pot set. And this wok came with it. I use this wok for almost everything that I cook. It's amazing. But I found that if you look up Wolfgang Puck woks, you can find it on Amazon. All right, make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this amazing quick and simple recipe. Jeannie Young Sal. When is the last time you all had chicken and dumplings? It's been a while for my household and we are so excited. Now, speaking about the other recipe that I have up, those frozen dumplings are top of the line. The name brand is Rami, 
R-E-A-M-E, -E. I, I believe that's the correct spelling, but if it's not, you can look it up. But it comes in a green and white and clear bag. They are frozen, they're homemade, and all you do is you just drop them into your broth, and they are amazing. I use those, and I use the noodles when I make homemade chicken and noodles. Check those out if you don't wanna make your dumplings or your noodles you know, from scratch. All right, so remember I told you I washed the chicken. Now the big part of making a beautiful broth is you want the bone of the chicken. That bone is gonna give you an amazing broth, an amazing flavor. And some of the skin is great to have in your broth. It's almost like you need it to make that beautiful flavor come out into your broth. So I have the skin, the skin, you can see the skin is off of some of the thighs and then I left the skin purposely on. The skin is on some of the legs and some of the legs I took the skin off, all right? And then I have some breast underneath here that there's no, um, no bone and no skin. So let's put our chicken into our pan just like so. You can see that I have some water. I'm pouring a little bit of the water out so we can fit our chicken in. Just gonna put this chicken in just like so. Look at that big leg, beautiful, my goodness. Hooey, you better make you some. I, you know, honestly, I haven't even started the recipe and my mouth is salivating right now. Salivating. I'm making sure that I take off the, um, uh, what is it, the seeds from my lemon, guys. <laughs> when I was, washing and cleaning my chicken some seeds got in there so i'll make sure that i take that out just like so here are some of the boneless skinless pieces and here's those breasts that i spoke about beautiful my goodness listen here now i've even seen some people take the whole roasting chicken put that bad boy down into their crock pot or down into whatever pot they're going to use and they use that whole chicken to just simmer and make a beautiful broth you can do that as well or if there's a certain part of the chicken that you want to use you can do that okay you don't have to use all of the pieces like i'm using i just happen to have you know a couple of pieces hanging around so that's what we're going to use all right now next i'm going to wash my hands and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. Anytime you're dealing with raw meats, you always want to wash your hands so that you don't transfer bacteria to any of your spices or anything else that you may touch. Okay, everyone, my hands are impeccably clean. First thing you want to do is you want to put some seasoning down into your chicken and the water. I'm going to put some salt in there. Don't you dare be afraid to season. If you're that person that's afraid to season things, then your food will have no flavor. And that won't be good. Season your food, guys. Salt. Onion powder is amazing in chicken broth. As well as garlic powder. Cracked black pepper is definitely a must. Get you some in there, just like this. I'm gonna put a nice amount in. There you go, baby. All right, and then some red chili pepper flakes. Not a lot, it's a little bit. That's it, it's not gonna burn anybody. And then I like to go in right away with two tablespoons of this better than bouillon. It is beauty. It's amazing. It's so tasty. Once you taste this, oh my goodness. Hooey, listen here. You have a match made in heaven. Anything you put this in. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator so I don't forget. It's very important that you put that in the refrigerator after using. Okay, now we're going to set this aside. And we're going to start to cut some of our veggies. I'm going to put just one and a half sprigs. Just one and a half sprig is all I'm going to need. I'm not a fan of thyme. But when you make homemade chicken and dumplings or homemade chicken and noodle soup, you need some fresh thyme. 
I do like fresh thyme, but I don't like dried thyme. You can't get me to eat dried thyme for nothing in the world. <laughs> this right here, put it right in there with the stem and all. And you see that's just a little bit because I might use a little bit more a little later. Okay? So now, let's go ahead and grab some garlic. Okay, so we have our garlic and our onion. Let's go ahead and chop up some of the onion. I'm gonna use half of this onion. It's going to go in our broth. It's gonna give you an amazing flavor. And later we're gonna use some more onion. This onion right here is it's gonna cook so long, it's just gonna kinda of disintegrate down into flavor land if you can understand what I'm saying. It's gonna cook so long, it's just gonna, like I said, disintegrate but it's gonna give off so much flavor. Trust me when I tell you this. All right, beautiful. Onion going in. Now that onion, later we're gonna cut some more and we're gonna put some more in later. And what the onion will do later is you'll be able to see that onion and you'll be able to bite down into it. And it's not gonna be cooked as long as this onion. Okay, but I'll show you everything in detail. So now we're gonna give this garlic a nice whack, just like so. By giving it a whack, you um, are able to take the skin off very easy. If you don't whack it like that, you're gonna be peeling for days trying to get that skin off. <laughs> I don't wanna be peeling for days, okay? So then I'm gonna whack it one more time just to give me some assistance in the cutting process, just like so. You don't have to chop this up super fine. Like I said, this is gonna cook so long, it's just gonna disintegrate into the flavor, okay? If you wanted to put slices in there, you better believe you can. But there's some people that don't like to bite down into huge slices, okay? That's how mine's is. Get it in there, all that flavor, baby. You hear me? Hooey. Woo! Make sure you wash these off. And it's always okay to use these little, uh, what are we going to call these? The frilly parts of your celery. Don't waste it. Put it right in there. Okay? It's nothing but flavor. Just make sure you wash your veggies off well. I'm going to use one celery stalk as flavor for our broth. And then I'm gonna go through this and cut it once again. This right here will disintegrate as well. But then later we'll go back and we'll put more in. And like I said, that celery will be able to bite down into it and see it. This right here is just to flavor it. There you go, baby, get right in there. Just like so. So now we have all of our beautiful seasonings. We have garlic. We have onion and celery, and not to mention that better than bouillon chicken flavoring. Let's bring this up to a, a, to a medium boil. Get this chicken cooked. The chicken will take around about 35 to 40 minutes to cook fully. And once it's cooked fully, we're gonna take the chicken out and I'm gonna show you what we'll do next. Okay guys, while we wait on our chicken to cook, I just wanted to show you all Prince and Polo. They are actually snacking on carrots. They love carrots and they love sweet potatoes. I thought I'd show you them why they enjoy a nice snack. It's Friday night at the Young's house. Everybody's eating good at the Young's house, even the puppies. Okay, everyone, I just wanna show you what our beautiful broth is looking like. And you know, the chicken is not done. The dogs actually hear my husband coming in through the garage, so you can hear them barking in the background. Okay, I'm just pushing those beautiful veggies down into the broth. And I'll show you this once the chicken is done. Let's make our way over back to the island, and I'm gonna show you how quick and simple it is to make these lovely, beautiful dumplings. Okay, everyone, so now I'm gonna show you how to make these really quick and simple, yet so tasty, nice, beautiful, and fluffy dumplings. Quick and easy. Two cups of all-purpose flour. We're gonna put a half a teaspoon of salt in. Gonna put you some pepper in. You only need a half a teaspoon. 
I like to just kind of eyeball my pepper, okay? Because it's going to be hard to grind this pepper into the measuring spoon, all right? Just like so. You're going to need one tablespoon of baking powder. Just like so. I'm going to put just a tiny bit of more, guys. Just a tiny bit. Okay, and then we're going to need one and one-third cup of your milk or your buttermilk. I'm going to mix everything in, just like so. Get everything well incorporated in this manner. And really, it's as simple. Nothing hard about this recipe right here. It's going to come in together into somewhat of a ball. And then we're just going to take a spoon, and we're going to make like little balls and just kind of drop them in, okay? Just like that. Okay, everyone, so this right here, that is the dough. Really quick and simple, right? You don't have to do anything else to it. If you want it to, a lot of people like to put fresh um, herbs in theirs, and it looks nice and beautiful, but you don't have to. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just grab it this way and kind of just throw it into your broth that way, okay? And I'll show you, but we're gonna let this set. I'm gonna cover it with uh, plastic wrap until we're ready to use this, and this will sit into the refrigerator until we're ready to use it. Okay, everybody, it has been 40 minutes. Our chicken is fully cooked. Now what we need to do is take every piece of chicken out of the pan, out of this beautiful broth that we made, let it cool for a minute, and then go in and take all the chicken off of the bone. We're just gonna set it on that cookie sheet right there, and we're gonna get rid of the skin. You don't want that skin, so take off the skin. If you wanted to leave your uh, chicken wings whole like that, a lot of people like to do that. But we're just gonna take the skin, the meat off, set it on here, and then we'll be left with this beautiful broth, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, everyone, right here you can see that Tariq has taken all of the meat and he's shredding it off the bone, getting rid of the bones and the fat, and all of the meat that we're going to use is right here, okay? As soon as it's nice and shredded, you can leave it in big chunks like this if you like, no problem. But if you want to shred it, then you can. We're going to shred ours up just by using two forks, and you're just going to do it in this motion, and you'll have shredded chicken in your broth. And you can see I have a beautiful broth here, so flavorful. Listen here, I tasted this broth, and it's absolutely amazing. But what you're going to see when you take your chicken out is that your broth is going to go way down. So a lot of your broth has evaporated, so just add some more water to it and then taste your broth and see if it needs to be reseasoned. I'll taste my broth and if I feel like it needs to be reseasoned, we'll use those same seasonings and put a little bit more in to re since we're replacing a little bit more water, okay? I'll be back after the chicken is ready to go back in. Okay, everybody, now it's time for the nitty gritty. Here's where everything happens so fast from here. Our chicken is nice and beautifully taken off of the bone. Okay, put that chicken right back in there. Make sure you get all the skin, any tendons, and any bones off of your chicken. Okay, and next, you wanna give it a nice whirl around just like so. You wanna bring that back up to temperature because the chicken has cooled down somewhat. Now we're gonna put, this right here is the frilly part off of the celery. Remember I said, don't throw that part away. This is around about um, two celery stalks and the onion. Put that in there, the other half of the onion. And then I have one more sprig. The other two sprigs of thyme, um, you know, the thyme pieces fall off of the little stick and I got rid of the stick. We're just gonna put that in there, just like so for added flavor. Okay, check me out. We're gonna cook this celery and this onion for around about, uh, let's just say 10, 15 minutes. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put our beautiful carrots in, just like so. 
Let them start to get nice and tender. Everything is starting to look nice and beautiful, right? Like I said, everything happens so fast from here on out. And then your peas, your peas go in the last 10 minutes of the cooking process. And really you can put your peas in the last five minutes, okay? Because they'll continue to cook as long as your, you know, your soup is nice and hot, all right? So this has just been sitting on the counter after we took it out of the bag, all right? So we're gonna let this simmer for around about 15 minutes. And then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to Put your beautiful homemade dumplings into your soup. Okay, everyone, while we wait on everything to come up to a nice boil and the veggies to get nice and tender, let's take some of this fresh parsley that we've washed. Look how beautiful and green it is. Let's cut some of this up. This is gonna give you an amazing flavor as well as a beautiful color right on top of your dumpling. This is a must, and I highly suggest that you use fresh. You can use the dried if you want, okay? You can, but when you're making chicken and dumplings, take that extra step to use the fresh parsley, and a little bit goes a long way, okay? Trust me when I tell you this. So we have this done and out the way. I'll be back after our veggies get nice and tender. and. You cook your veggies as long as you'd like to cook yours. If you're that person that wants your veggies extra soft, then cook yours a little bit longer before you put your dumplings in, all right? And the dumplings won't take any time to cook. But when you put your dumplings in, remember you wanna make sure you put a lid on top so that they can steam a little bit and get nice and puffy. Okay, everybody, let me show you what our beautiful broth looks like. You can see, nice and beautiful. We got these huge pieces of chicken going all throughout all of our veggies, and this broth right here is to absolutely die for. I did have to go in and season once again, and what I did was I actually put a teaspoon more of my chicken better than bouillon in here, a little bit more garlic and onion powder and cracked black pepper. Okay, so now that everything is ready, we're going to take, here's what our dough looks like. It's been just sitting in the refrigerator. We're gonna take, you can take an ice cream scoop if you'd like, or you can just use a tablespoon as I'm going to show you. And then I'm gonna use a butter knife, see that there? And then we're just gonna drop these babies right in to your beautiful mixture or your beautiful broth. Okay, try not to put them together because they'll cook together and you'll have, you know, uh, dumplings that are stuck together. And like I said, if you have an ice cream scoop, that's even better. This right here is what I like to call free forming the dumplings, but it's real simple. You know, just like this. Don't put too many in your pan. Don't put too many in your pan, okay? You don't wanna overcrowd them, all right? If you wanted to make extras for more people, then what I highly suggest is just get some, some type of chicken broth or turkey broth or something on the side and drop extra dumplings into that. And then as they grab their chicken soup, they can add more dumplings but you just don't want to overcrowd this pan and make it too thick, okay? You can see that they're already starting to form, get beautiful and fluffy. This right here is how Gina Young, Gina Young makes homemade dumplings. You all ask for it. Well, here you go. You got a great recipe that you can make for your family, friends, and loved ones. If you all enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Jeannie Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know all about Jeannie Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. All right, looks like I might put three more in. And then we'll put the lid on quickly 
so that they can steam, okay? You kind of take your butter knife as I did if they don't form a circle and kind of move it, you know, in that motion so you can get a circle, you know, kind of like this, okay? I'm gonna do just two more and I'm satisfied, put the lid on and I'm gonna let you know how long these bad boys cook. You all are in for the treat of your life. Once you feed this right here to your family members, trust me, you're not gonna be able to get rid of them that easy. They're gonna keep coming back for this right here. Gina Young style. Let's get a lid on. We're gonna let these cook. I know I said one more, but I do wanna put one more in this pan because I know when I make my bowl, I'm gonna put at least five of these in my bowl. All right, just like this, I'll be back when they're fully cooked. And five minutes before this is completely done, we're gonna throw those fresh peas in and we're gonna put that beautiful fresh parsley right on top as a garnish. Be back. Okay, everyone, it's time to put the peas in just like so. Don't over, don't put them right on top of your dumplings and weigh your dumplings down, okay? Just kind of swirl them in. I like to use the whole frozen bag of the peas. I don't know about you all, but I love frozen peas, especially in my chicken and dumplings. Just like this, baby. And now it's time. The dumplings aren't done, but it's time to put our beautiful, fresh parsley right on top of the dumplings. Get that lid on so these can finish cooking so we can give this a try. Oh, hurry up, I'm so excited. Look at this. Ooh, -wee. girl, you are something else in that kitchen. You hear me? Woo! I hear you. That's what I'm here for, guys. Okay, everybody, it's been 15 minutes, and you keep your lid covered. You can do you can do your lid partially like this, so you don't get a whole lot of steam. Uh, steam, and that's how I had this. I had it just a little bit cracked open, so some of that steam can come out. 15 minutes you want to cook them so they can be nice and cooked in the outside nice and cooked in the inside as well let's make our way over to the island we're going to say a beautiful prayer over Jeannie young style chicken and dumplings 101 you all never had these before you better make you some you better make you some look at this guys it couldn't be more beautiful what beautiful meal to have for your family Friday night at your house. Any night of the week you can make this for your family. Look at this. Hooey! Look at this, guys. Look how beautiful. Oh my goodness. Hooey! You know you better make you some. We're going to plate this up. Let's see our prayer now. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful meal today. Lord, I thank you for this gift that you've given me to share with the world. We thank you for your mercy. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Lord, we thank you for protecting us, for keeping us safe every day and loving us. We thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace, and the joy that you bring us daily. Amen. Okay, everyone, it's time to dive in. And of course, of course, I'm gonna give you all the first bite. Look at this. Would you just look at this? Gina Young style. Chicken and dumplings, 101. Y'all never had this before, you better make yourself. Look at that. Oh, whoo, look at that. Mm hmm Let's get another view on that. Just like so. All right, first thing we want to do is we want to taste. You always have to taste the broth first. Okay, let's give this beautiful broth a taste. You don't even have to season this. You don't need any salt. You don't need any, pe any pepper. It's already done for you. You don't need crackers. You don't need cornbread. It's all in that bowl right there for you. Look at this. Look at that beautiful seasoning. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. My goodness. One more time. I have to. One more time. Oh. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And it has the perfect amount of heat. By putting that uh, red pepper flake, it's perfect. It makes you not need any more pepper, you know? So then we're going to go in with our fork. We're going to take a bite. Look at this beautiful chicken, first of all. Take a bite of that chicken. <laughs> oh, look at that chicken. My goodness. Hooey. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. Time for that dumpling. Oh, they are fluffy. Oh, it's so beautiful. Now, see, I want you all to see the inside. Look at this. Take a look at the inside. It's like a beautiful pillow. It's yet so fluffy and so flavorful. Oh, you better ask somebody about Gina Young. Look at this. Taste that. Mm, mm, mm. God, God, that's good. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Now I'm going to go in with the dumpling and the meat and the veggies. Mm. And carrot. I want everything on that fork. You all taste this and let me know what you think about Gina Young. Mm. I feel like I'm not getting a really good picture. Make sure you all click on that notification bell. Tell all your family and friends everything you know about Gina Young. Make sure to give me a thumbs up. And as always, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Good night. But not before we take one more bite. One more bite, guys. One more bite. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's so good. Whew, look at that. Mm-mm-mm. Beautiful. You better make you some, honey. You better make you some. Look at that. Mm-mm-mm.